All right. This is the second class for today. And the third class is going to be receiving tests from the apostle from apostle Mark. Na darasa letu la tatu litakuwa linahusu kuchukua mtihani kutoka kwa mtume wetu Mark. So please get prepared and be ready. Kwa hiyo ujitayarishe na uwe tayari. It's going to be very good. <laughs> Itakuwa ni kidogo ngumu ngumu kidogo. But wonderful time. Lakini utakuwa na wakati mzuri. We will enjoy. Na tutafurahia. So please get ready. Tafadhali uwe tayari. Okay, are you ready now for today? Je, uko tayari sasa? Yesterday I started this uh, subject of Christian water baptism. Eh, jana nilianza somo hili la ubatizo wa Kikristo. And I say that we are dealing with the, the doctrine of water baptism. Nilisema kwamba hili ni fundisho linalohusu ubatizo wa maji au ubatizo wa Kikristo. And today we're going to start where we ended up yesterday. Na leo tutaanzia pale ambapo tuliishia jana. There are these three facts about baptism. Kuna kweli hizi aina tatu au mambo haya aina tatu yanayohusu ubatizo. That I want to bring it to you. Ambayo nataka nikuletee sasa. We are baptized into Christ himself. Huwa tunabatizwa katika Kristo mwenyewe. Not into any particular church. Hatubatizwi katika kanisa lolote lile. Not into any sect. Any sect. Si hatubatizwi katika kundi lolote au jamaa yoyote ile. Or any denomination. Ama dhehebu lolote lile. We are baptized into Christ. Huwa tunabatizwa katika Kristo. So if you are not born again, you cannot be baptized. Kwa hiyo kama haujaokoka, hauwezi kubatizwa. And if you are baptized without to be born again, you are doing a very stupidity thing. Na kama unabatizwa kabla hujaokoka basi unafanya kitu cha kijinga sana. This something that you must bear in your mind. Na hiki ni kitu ambacho unapaswa kukikumbuka wakati wote. You are not baptized to be a member of Hofan Ministries. Haubatizwi kuwa mshirika wa huduma ya Hofan. You are not baptized to be a member of EAGT, PAG, TAG or whatever you can call, you can name them. Haubatizwi ili kuwa mshirika wa TAG, EAGT, PAG ama kanisa lolote ambalo unawezo kalitaja. You know some people knows that they are baptized to be church members of a certain church. Watu wanafikiri kwamba wanabatizwa ili wawe washirika wa kanisa fulani. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 tells us very clearly. Kitabu cha Wagalatia sura ya 3 na mstari wa 27 inatuelezea kwa uwazi kabisa. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ. Anasema wengi wenu mlivyobatizwa katika Kristo have put on Christ. Memva Kristo. So we are baptized into Christ. Kwa hiyo tunabatizwa katika Kristo. In another meaning we are baptized to become his. To become his. Yaani kwa namna nyingine au maana ingine ni kuwa tunabatizwa ili tuwe wake. Jesus Christ is the Lord over the church. Yesu Kristo ambaye ni Bwana juu ya kanisa. He has all the authority. Ana mamlaka yote. And he said I'm going to build my church. Akasema nitalijenga hekalu langu. And the gates of hell shall never shall not prevail. Na malango ya kuzimu halitalishinda. So whether you are here in Dar es Salaam or you are in America, Germany, England, wherever you are. Koyo kama upo Dar es Salaam au Marekani uko Ujerumani ama popote ulimwenguni ulipo. When you receive Christ as your personal savior. Unapompokea Kristo kuwa mwokozi wako. And of course when you receive Christ automatically you receive the Holy Spirit. 
na ndivyo ilivyo kwamba unapompokea Kristo moja kwa moja unakuwa umepokea Roho Mtakatifu and then you need to follow the, 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 the principles you need to be baptized in water na sasa unaanza kufuata zile kanuni ambapo unabatizwa kwa maji and then you are baptized to be his not of any church na sasa unabatizwa ili uwe wake na si kwamba uwe mshirika wa kanisa lolote that this is the reason why and uh, every pastor who is going to heaven will lead the people to look at Christ not to look at themselves na ndio kusudi hili kwamba mchungaji yoyote anayeelekea mbinguni ni lazima wafanye watu wamtazame Yesu Kristo na si watu kumtazama yeye mchungaji somebody say amen moja aseme amina another fact here na kweli mwingine hapa the effect of baptism depends upon the personal faith yani tukio lile la ubatizo huwa linatokea kwa katika imani ya mtu personal faith of the one being baptized yani ni kitendo kinachotokea katika imani ya mtu anayekwenda kubatizwa now remember without this faith Kumbuka ya kwamba pasipo imani hii the mere ceremony of baptism alone is of no effect. Yaani swala la ubatizo peke yake linakuwa halina umaana. That's why when we preach to you we tell you to believe in Christ. Ndio maana tunapowahubirieni tunawaelezeni ya kuwa mumwamini Kristo. And then you need to have that faith to know what you are doing. Ndipo unahitajika kupata ile imani ili ujue ni nini unafanya. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Pasipo imani ni vigumu kumpendeza Mungu. So it is not the matter of being baptized here. Kwa si swala la kubatizwa tu hapa. But it is about faith. Lakini ni swala linalohusu imani of the one being baptized. Imani kwa yule mtu anayebatizwa. Another fact Ukweni mwingine through the water of baptism kupitia ubatizo wa yale maji a believer commits himself to a new life to God yule muamini huwa anajikabidhi au anajiingiza katika maisha mapya kwa Mungu total depend upon the power of the holy ghost akiwa kikamilifu akitegemea ile nguvu ya roho mtakatifu let us see a little bit about John's baptism compared to Christian baptism. Sasa tuangalie kidogo ubatizo wa Yohana Mbatizaji tukiufananisha na ule ubatizo wa Kikristo. Many Christians may not be clear as to the difference between the baptism of John the Baptist and the Christian baptism. Wakristo wengi wanaweza wasielewe kwa uwazi vizuri utofauti kati ya ubatizo wa Yohana na ule ubatizo wa Kikristo. Therefore it is helpful to begin the study of these two forms of baptism. Na kwa sababu hiyo ni vema kuwa na usomi hapo kupata kuelewa batizo hizi mbili ule wa Yohana mbatizaji na ule wa Kikristo. Now go with me to the book of of acts sasa uende pamoja nami katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume acts chapter 19 eh, matendo ya mitume sura ile ya 19 and verse 1 to 5 na mstari ule wa kwanza hadi mstari wa 5 hallelujah hallelujah i have my, somebody give me my, my glasses I... tafadhali moja nisaidie miwani pale i'm getting old Naanza kuzeeka kidogo. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Acts. Kitabu kile cha Matendo. Chapter 19. Sura ya 19. We're gonna read from verse 1. Tutasoma kuanzia mstari wa kwanza to 5. Hadi msali ule wa tano. And uh, it happened that while Apollo was at Corinth. Ikawa Apollo alipokuwa Korinto, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. 
Paulo akisha kupita kati ya inchi za juu akafika Efeso. There he found some disciples. Akakutana na wanafunzi kadha wa kadha. And he said to them, Akawauliza, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were believed? Je, mlipokea Roho Mtakatifu mlipoamini? They and they said, Wakamjibu, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Wakasema la, yani hapana, hata kusikia kwamba kuna Roho Mtakatifu, hata and, kusikia. And he said, akawauliza sasa, Into what then were you baptized? Basi mlibatizwa kwa ubatizo gani? They said into John's baptism. Wakasema kwa ubatizo wa Yohana. And Paul said, Paul akasema, John baptized with the baptism of repentance. Yohana alibatiza kwa ubatizo wa toba. Telling the people to believe in the one who was to come. Akiwaambia watu waamini yeye atakayekuja. After him. Nyuma yake. That is Jesus. Yaani huyo ni Yesu. On hearing this, waliposikia haya, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wakabatizwa kwa jina la Bwana Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here in Ephesus Paul encountered a group of people who called themselves disciples. Sasa Yesu katika huyu Paulo katika pita yake akakutana na wanafunzi waliojiita ni wanafunzi hawa, yani wafuasi waliojiita wanafunzi. At first Paul took them to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Mara ya kwanza Paulo alidhani ya kwamba wale walikuwa ni wanafunzi au wafuasi wa Yesu Kristo. But on the closer examination, lakini baada ya ku, kuwapa jaribio kwa kuwatazama kwa karibu, he figured out that they were only disciples of John the Baptist. Akaja kugundua ya kuwa walikuwa ni wanafunzi wa Yohana Mbatizaji. We have many people who call themselves Christians today. Tuna watu wengi leo wanaojiita wa Kristo only to find that they are just religious people. Na bila kujua unagundua tu kwamba wao ni watu wa dini tu. They are full of the spirit of Pharisees and Sadducees. Sadis, sad, yani wao wana roho zile za kifarisayo na za masadukayo. Not everyone who call himself or herself Christian is a Christian. Si kila mtu anayejiita mkristo kwamba ni mkristo kweli. These people were calling themselves apostles. Hawa watu walijiita mitume. But only to find that there were just people, mere people. Lakini kugundua baadaye na wakaja kukuta kwamba walikuwa ni watu wa kawaida. They had heard and accepted John's message of repentance. Walisikia na wakakubali ujumbe wa Yohana uliohusu toba. And the form of baptism that went with it na mfumo au aina ya ubatizo ulioambatana na ile imani ya Yohana but thank god lakini tunamshukuru Mungu they had heard nothing of the gospel of Jesus Christ wali hawakupata kusikia injili ya Yesu but Christo. they got the opportunity to hear the message of Jesus Christ lakini wakapata fursa sasa ya kusikia ujumbe au injili ya Yesu Kristo Paul preaching to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul akiwa anahubilia injili ya Yesu Kristo. No matter uh, how many years you are in that denomination. Haijalishi una miaka kiasi gani katika hilo dhehebu. We have given the authority to preach to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tumepewa mamlaka ya kukuhubiria wewe injili ya Yesu Kristo. And we will preach to you until when you make up your mind. Tutakuhubilia mpaka pale utakapofanya uamuzi. And this is good news for you. Na hii ni habari njema kwako. When you receive the gospel, unapopokea injili, you accept Jesus Christ. Ukampokea au kumkubali Yesu Kristo. You give him your life. Ukampa maisha yako. You become a born again Christian. Unakuwa ni Mkristo aliyeokoka. And then heaven become your home. Na mbinguni kunafanyika makao yako au nyumbani kwako. Bad news is this. Habari mbaya ni kwamba if you harden your heart, kama utafanya moyo wako kuwa mgumu, you insult the gospel. Na ukatukana injili. 
That is very very calamity over your life. Hilo ni janga kubwa juu ya maisha yako. Because hell will be your home. Kwa sababu jehanamu ndiko kutakuwa nyumbani kwako. No matter what name they call you. Haijalishi wanakuita kwa jina gani. Maybe you are called in the name that found in the Bible. Pengine unaitwa kwa jina moja wapa ambalo linapatikana katika Biblia. It doesn't matter. Haijalishi. If you are not a born again person. Kama wewe si mtu aliyeokoka. You are heading to hell. Unaelekea jehanamu. Receive Jesus Christ. Umpokee Yesu Kristo. To be your savior. Awe mokozi wako. These people in Ephesus had the opportunity to receive the gospel. How watu katika mji wa Efeso walipata fursa ya kusikiliza injili? Paul had to to preach to them the good news of Jesus Christ. Paulo ilibidi awahubirie habari njema za Yesu Kristo. These people they had nothing about Christian form of baptism either. Hawa watu hawakuelewa kabisa wala kujua mfumo wote wa ubatizo wa Kikristo. We have many people today tuna watu wengi leo who had heard the message of their religion ambao wao walipata au kusikia neno au mahubiri ya madhehebu yao and unfortunately la ni kwa bahati mbaya they were mistakenly baptized wakabatizwa ndivyo sivyo as they call themselves kama vile wanavyojiita wenyewe but they are not baptized lakini kihalisia hawajabatizwa because you need to firstly accept Jesus Christ kwa sababu cha kwanza unatakiwa kumpokea Yesu Kristo and you get saved ndipo unaokolewa then you can be baptized ndipo unaweza kubatizwa they follow rules and the regulations of their religion Walifuata sheria na taratibu za dhehebu lao au dini yao. And there is some of them received sprinkling or spray baptism. Wengine walipata ubatizo ule wa kunyunyiziwa maji. And after that they say in a shout and shout and sing that I'm baptized. Na baada hapo wanapaza sauti wanasema nimebatizwa. Paul preached the gospel of Christ to these who called themselves disciples. Paulo alihubiri injili ya Yesu Kristo kwa watu waliojiita wanafunzi. And I'm glad I'm preaching to you who you did not receive the right baptism. Ninashukuru kwamba ninakuhubiria wewe ambaye huenda hukupokea ubatizo ulio sahihi. Sprinkling or spraying is not baptism. Yaani kunyunyiziwa au kupuliziwa maji si ubatizo. You can refer to the class one of this subject of the doctrine of water baptism. Unaweza ukarejea katika darasa letu la kwanza lililohusu somo hili la ubatizo. Where we got the word bapto from Greek? Ambapo tulipata neno bapto kutoka kwa lugha ile ya Kiunani. Whereby the word baptizo came from ambako neno lile baptizo au batiza lilikotokea and in english is baptize na kwa kiingereza inasema kubatiza and that dipto is to dip something in water na hiyo bapto likiwa na maana ya kuzamisha kitu ndani ya maji so sprinkling is not baptism kwa hiyo kunyunyiziwa sio ubatizo so kwa hiyo these people watu hawa they did not receive the right baptism hawakupokea ubatizo ulio sahihi and paul na paulo he taught them about christian form of baptism paulo akawafundisha aina ya ubatizo wa kikristo paul preached the gospel of christ to those who called themselves christian those days paulo akahubiri injili kwa watu waliojiita wakati ule wa kristo Now when Paul preached to them the right gospel Paulo alipohubiria injili sahihi they accepted the gospel thank god hallelujah wakapokea na kukubali ile injili hallelujah they accepted hallelujah. Jesus hallelujah walielewa they believed in Christ hallelujah wakamwamini Kristo hallelujah and they believed in Christ wholeheartedly wakaamini katika Kristo kwa mioyo yote then na ndipo they were baptized wakabatizwa this time 
wakati huu with the right baptism walibatizwa kwa ubatizo uliokuwa sahihi the baptism in the name of the lord jesus ubatizo katika jina la bwana yesu not that one the baptism of john the baptist Yaani ule wa kwanza ulikuwa ni ubatizo katika jina la Yohana Mbatizaji. And this is the reason why we, In, we conduct crusades. Hii ndio sababu tunakuwa na mikutano ya injili ya nje and evangelistic campaigns. Na kuwa na zile kampeni za uinjilisti to can lead you ili kukufanya wewe to believe in Christ. Kumuamini Kristo. I know you are You, you are calling yourself a Christian. Najua unajiita wewe ni Mkristo. But please follow these teachings. Lakini tafadhali sana fuatilia vizuri mafundisho haya. From that one of new birth. Yaani kuanza yale ya kuzaliwa upya au pale unapookoka. Holy Spirit baptism. Yale mafundisho ya ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Christians water baptism na ubatizo wa Kikristo wa maji please go on follow these teachings tafadhali endelea kufuatilia mafundisho haya the lord is giving you good news about christianity yani mungu anakupa habari njema zinazohusu ukristo so don't hiyo. call yourself a christian if you are not Usijiite mkristo hali ya kuwa wewe si mkristo. We want to show you the way to follow. Tunataka tukuoneshe njia ya kuifuata. You have to follow the right way. Lazima ufuate njia iliyo sahihi. And which is this, this way? Na je, njia hii ni nani? Jesus is the way. Yesu Kristo ndiye njia hii. Jesus is the way. Yesu Kristo ndiye njia hii. He said I'm a way, the truth and the life. Anasema mimi ndimi njia, kweli na uzima. In the book of Romans chapter 1 katika kitabu cha Warumi sura ya kwanza and verse 16 na mstari wa 16 for i am not ashamed of the gospel anasema sionei haya injili for it is the power of god for salvation kwa maana ni uwezo wa Mungu leta uokovu to everyone who believes kwa yeyote yule anayeamini oh my god did you hear this oh Mungu sijui kama mmeelewa hili to everyone who believes kwa yeyote yule anayeamini we say that salvation tulisema ya kwa wokovu it is all about you to believe not your father not your mother not anybody for you inakuhusu wewe kuamini na si baba yako wala si mama yako wala mtu mwingine yeyote ever since jesus was baptized kutokea pale ambapo yesu alibatizwa as a second adam yani akiwa ndiye adamu wa pili john's baptism was closed Ubatizo wa Yohana ulikomea pale ukafungwa pale. John's baptism was no longer accepted. Yaani ubatizo wa Yohana haukuweza kukubalika tena. There is only one kind of baptism in Christianity. Kuna ubatizo wa aina moja katika Ukristo which is Christians water baptism ambao ni ubatizo wa maji wa Kikristo Somebody say an amen Hebu mmoja aseme amina I didn't hear you I want to hear your amen Sija kusikiliza hebu nisikie amina kubwa huko You know the people had been given opportunity to hear the true gospel of Christ. Hao watu walipewa fursa ya kusikiliza injili ya kweli ya Yesu Kristo. And Jesus opened the curtain. Na Yesu akafungua ile njia. In Mark chapter 1. Katika Marko sura ya kwanza. And verse 15. Na mstari wa kumi na tano Jesus said, Yesu anasema, The time is fulfilled. Yaani wakati au muda unatimizwa. The time is fulfilled. Yaani muda au muda ule umetimizwa. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Kwamba ufalme wa Mungu umekaribia. Repent. Tubuni and believe in the gospel na muamini injili not in in john baptist na sikuamini katika yohana mbatizaji not in a pastor sikuamini kwa mchungaji yeyote not in a pope sikuamini papa not in a bishop sikumuamini askofu believe in the gospel muaminini injili hallelujah hallelujah mark chapter 16 Mako sura ya 16 and verse 16 na mstari wa 16 Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved Yeyote atakayeamini na kuokoka na kubatizwa ataokoka 
Those who had only received John's baptism wale ambao walipokea ubatizo ule wa Yohana mbatizaji were required to be rebaptized again. Walihitajika wabatizwe tena. And this is the call. Na hili huu ndio wito those who received sprinkling baptism wale waliopokea ubatizo wa kunyunyiziwa maji that is not baptism huo sio ubatizo you need to believe in christ unahitajika kumwamini kristo and to be baptized na kubatizwa hallelujah hallelujah that is not baptism ubatizo wa namna hiyo sio ubatizo it is just sprinkling ni kunyunyiziwa tu you need to believe in the gospel unahitaji kuamini katika injili you need to accept christ unahitaji kumpokea kristo then you will be baptized ndipo unapotakiwa sasa kubatizwa with the christian baptism kwa ubatizo wa kikristo there are difference between two baptism here kuna utofauti kati ya batizo hizi mbili there are difference between these two baptisms kuna tofauti kati ya batizo hizi mbili the john's baptism ubatizo ule wa yohana and the christian water baptism na ubatizo wa maji wa kikristo and the differences are this na tofauti zao ni hizi john's ule ubatizo wa yohana was to be baptized first ilikuwa ni kubatizwa kwanza for repentance and confession kwa ajili ya toba na msamao wa dhambi But Christian baptism lakini ubatizo wa Kikristo you need to repent first kwanza unahitajika kutubu you need to believe kwanza unatakiwa kuamini and then to be baptized ndipo unapotakiwa kubatizwa in John you are baptized for repentance kwa Yohana unabatizwa tu kwa ajili ya ondoleo la dhambi and confession na kuondolewa yani ondoleo la dhambi na toba but christian baptism lakini ubatizo wa kikristo you will be given opportunity to hear the gospel first unapewa fursa ya kusikia injili kwanza that's why we say kids cannot believe Tunasema kwamba watoto hawawezi kuamini. Kids are still kids. Watoto wachanga bado ni watoto tu. And I want to tell you when they die. Na nataka nikwambie kwamba watakapokufa watoto hao. They go direct to heaven. Wao wanaenda mbinguni moja kwa moja. They know nothing about this world. Wenyewe hawajui chochote kuhusu dunia hii. But once you are grown up, lakini ukishakuwa mtu mzima, you need to make up your your mind. Ni lazima ufanye uamuzi to receive Christ as your personal savior. Ili kumpokea Kristo awe bwana na mokozi wako. You believe Unaamini? First one you repent. Cha kwanza unatubu. Then you believe. Ndipo unaamini. And then you, you be baptized. Basi baada hapo unabatizwa. So John's message and baptism kwa hiyo ujumbe wa Yohana mbatizaji na ubatizo wake had two special purpose. Yaani kulikwepo kusudi aina mbili. Number one. Cha kwanza to prepare the hearts of Israel to receive that they long awaited which is messiah lord yani ubatizo wa yohana cha kwanza ulikuwa na kusudi la kuandaa mioyo ya wayahudi ili kuweza kupokea kile walichokusubiria kwa muda mrefu ambaye ni mesia number two. cha kwa, cha pili they provided a link between the dispensation of the law yani wali, wali, wali weka kitu kiunganishi katika kile kipindi cha sheria which was closed by John's ministry ambacho kipindi hicho cha sheria kilifungwa au kilihitimishwa na huduma ya Yohana and the dispensation of the gospel na kile kipindi sasa cha injili which was initiated about three years later ambapo kile kipindi kilianzishwa miaka mitatu baadaye so John preached kwa hiyo Yohana alihubiri to provide a link between this dispensation 
ili kutengeneza kiunganishi kati ya kipindi kile cha agano la kale na kipindi law. kile kile kipindi cha sheria na kipindi hiki cha injili haleluya 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 now uh, three years later sasa miaka mitatu baadaye jesus went on the cross yesu akaenda pale msalabani he died and resurrected he alikufa na kufufuka and now na sasa it is another dis- dispensation dispensation hiki sasa ni kipindi au nizama zingine of the gospel nizama za injili so it was a period of transition kwa hiyo kilikuwa ni kipindi kile cha matengenezo ya mabadiliko John's ministry was briefly and temporary Uduma ile ya Yohana ilikuwa ni ya kifupi tu na ya muda mchache. He was preparing the way for Christ. Alikuwa tu akitengeneza njia kwa ajili ya Kristo. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Sauti ya mtu yule aliyae nyikani. Prepare the way for the Lord. Tengenezeni njia kwa ajili ya Bwana. Make his path straight. Tengenezeni mapito yake aliyonyoka. That's John 3 and verse 3. Ni Yohana sura ya tatu na mstari wa tatu. John came to sound the siren. Yohana alikuja tu kupiga kelele ile ya tarumbeta. As police prepares the way for the president to pass. Kama vile maaskari wa mapolisi huwa wanapiga vile vingora ili kutengeneza njia ya rais kupita. You know sometimes you will hear. Unasikia ile kelele wa 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 and you see the big motorcycle passes through Una, unaona ile pikipiki kubwa inapita vyu then one or two or three cars goes very fast Shop. unaona magari mawili matatu hivi yanapita tena pale kwa haraka kabisa i want to tell you president is not in there in those cars yani nataka nikwambie yale magari yaliyopita kwa speed rais hayuko mule ndani it is just a siren to prepare the, the president is coming yani hizo ni ishara tu na vingora vinavyoandaa kwamba rais anapita that's what that's what was all about the ministry of John the Baptist ndicho ambacho kilimaanisha au ndivyo ilivyokuwa katika huduma ya Yohana mbatizaji he just sounded the siren yeah alikuwa tu anapiga kelele ya kile kingora and and when siren is is been sounded sasa kile kingora kinapokuwa kinasikiwa all cars must be parked magari yote yanasimama na stop pale pembeni they must stop and they wait lazima yasimame yasubiri and all of a sudden na ghafla you will see another siren coming utaona sasa kingora kingine kinapita with some very special cars na magari yale sasa maalum and then the president is in there ndio utaona sasa rais yuko humo sasa hallelujah 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 so john came to prepare the way for the lord kwa hiyo yohana alikuja kutengeneza njia kwa ajili ya bwana and his baptism was just for repentance na ubatizo wake ulikuwa tu ni kwa ajili ya toba and confession na kwa ajili ondoleo la dhambi Now in order to receive Christian baptism Sasa ili upate kupokea ubatizo wa Kikristo There are two conditions which must be fulfilled Kuna utaratibu ama sheria za aina mbili ambazo lazima zitimizwe First one is repenting Sheria ya kwanza ni kwamba lazima utubu This is the first condition huu ndio taratibu au sheria kwanza You have to repent Ni lazima utubu The book of Acts chapter 2 kitabu kile cha matendo ya mitume sura ya pili verse 37 to 38 mstari wa 37 hadi 38 which records the reactions of Jewish multitude to Peter's sermon Pardon? it records the the Jewish multitude reactions to Peter's sermon yani ilipelekea ili, ili makusanyiko yale ya Kiyahudi kuelekea katika ujumbe au fundisho lile la Petro on the days of the pen, of Pentecost ile, ile siku ya Pentecost and the instruction Peter gave to them na kuna kitu au katika kusikia kwao kuna kitu Petro aliwapatia verse 37 says mstari ule wa 37 sura ya pili ya matendo unasema now when they heard this Walipoyasikia haya they were cut to the heart walichomya mioyo yao and said to Peter and the other apostles wakamwambia Petro na mitume wengine men and brethren akasema ndugu zetu what shall we do je tutendeje 38 mstari wa 38 Peter said to them 
Petro akasema akawaambia Repent Tubuni Repent Tubuni and let every one of you be baptized Kila mmoja wenu akabatizwe In the name of Jesus Christ Kwa jina lake Yesu Kristo For the remission of sin Mpate ondoleo la dhambi zenu 41 Mstari wa 41 And those who gladly received the word Now waliolipokea neno lake were baptized wakabatizwa Hallelujah somebody Hallelujah mtu mmoja hapa Hallelujah Christians Hallelujah wa Kristo The repentance is the first response Yaani katika uitikio wa kwanza wa toba God requires you to repent Mungu anakuhitaji wewe utubu Any sinner is required to repent Na kila moja au kila mwenye dhambi anahitajika kutubu Anyone who desire to be saved is required to repent Yeyote anayetaka kuokolewa anahitajika kutubu There will be no water baptism without repenting first Hakuwezi kukawepo ubatizo wa maji pasipokuwa na toba kwanza repent thing is making a bow turn yani kutubu ni kufanya kugeuka turning from wrong point to, to the right point kugeuka kutoka kwenye hatua mbaya kuelekea kwenye uelekeo ama hatua nzuri turning from this direction to the up another direction kugeuka kutoka kwenye uelekeo huu kuelekea uelekeo mwingine turning from the devil to christ kugeuka kutoka kwa shetani kuelekea kwa kristo that's all about repenting hiyo ndio ina maana ya ubatizo you say from today upward yani kuanzia sasa na kuendelea I deny your works devil. Unasema ya kwamba nakataa kazi zako shetani. You are no longer my lord. Wewe shetani si bwana wangu tena. Jesus Christ is my lord. Yesu Kristo ndiye bwana wangu. You refuse the works of the devil. Unakataa kazi za ibilisi. That is simply means to repent. Hiyo ndiyo maana ya kutubu. And everyone who desires to be saved na yeyote anayetamani kuokolewa is required to repent anahitajika kutubu the repentance is the first response god requires for all sinners yani toba ndio ndio mwitikio wa kwanza mungu anahitaji kwa wenye dhambi wote repentance is the first thing cha kwanza ni hiyo toba condition number two. ile sheria ama utaratibu wa pili is believing ni kuamini the book of mark chapter 16 verse 16 kitabu cha mako 16 16 he who believes yeyote aaminie and is baptized na akabatizwa will be saved ataokoka hallelujah hallelujah now to put it very clear here sasa kuiweka vizuri hapa when you hear the gospel Unaposikia injili when you receive Christ na unapompokea Kristo there is these two things you must do kuna vitu viwili hivi lazima uvifanye you, you must repent cha kwanza lazima utubu and you must believe in Christ na cha pili lazima uamini katika Kristo then you can be baptized ndipo hapo sasa unaweza kubatizwa the two requirements for baptism mahitaji haya mawili ya ubatizo are repenting and believing ni kwamba lazima utubu ndipo uamini i'm repeating this several times because it will come on test ninarudia rudia haya mara nyingi kwa sababu yatakuja katika mtihani tutakaopewa two requirements vitu viwili vina unavyohitajika kuvifanya baptism kwa ajili ya ubatizo wa maji ah repenting and believing cha kwanza ni toba cha pili ni kuamini christian baptism U, ubatizo wa kikristo must be built upon repenting and believing lazima ujengwe juu ya toba na kuamini not just be excited because they are going to baptize me siku furai tu kwamba wao wataenda kunibatiza you need to repent and believe in christ lazima utubu na uamini katika kristo after repenting and believing baada ya kuamini baada ya toba na kuamini the baptism now makes sense ndipo sasa ubatizo unaleta maana hallelujah somebody hallelujah mtu mmoja hallelujah hallelujah so christians water baptism kwa hiyo ubatizo wa maji wa kikristo is the outward seal ni ndio jambo ambalo tunaliona kwa nje or affirmation of 
the inward change ama ndio uthibitisho wa mbadiliko wa ndani produced by repentance and faith ambavyo vina, vina, vinazalishwa kupitia toba na imani so you need to repent kwa hiyo lazima utubu and believe na uamini and then be baptized na ndipo unabatizwa not that one of john si ubatizo ule wa yohana to be baptized kubatizwa then to repent na ndipo unatubu and confess ndipo unakili no hapana you need to repent first kwanza unahitajika kutubu and then believe na unahitajika kuamini and you know when you believe in Christ na unapokuwa umeamini katika Kristo and you accept him in your heart na ukampokea yeye katika moyo wako you become a born again person unakuwa ni mtu uliyeokoka au kuzaliwa mara ya pili it is then after you are born again ni hapo baada ya kuwa umeokoka au kuzaliwa mara ya pili then you, re- you can receive this all baptism this two ones ndipo unapoweza kupata batizo hizi za aina mbili the baptism of the holy spirit ubatizo ule wa ma- wa roho mtakatifu and water and the christian water baptism na ubatizo huu wa kikristo wa maji but before you are born again lakini kabla hujaokoka au kuzaliwa mara ya pili even if you do that hata ungebatizwa kwa batizo hizo You are doing something that is nonsense. Unafanya kitu cha kijinga kabisa kisicho na maana. It is meaningless. Hakina maana kabisa. You are just going to to wash there. You better you, you better carry the soap and the towel. Yaani unaenda tu kuoga kwenye hayo maji ya ubatizo na unaweza ukabeba taulo na hata sabuni pia. That is not Christian baptism. Huo sio ubatizo wa Kikristo. You need wholly heartedly to repent. Unahitajika kutubu kwa moyo wote. And wholly heartedly to believe in Christ. Na kwa moyo wote kumwamini Kristo that he died for you on the cross. Kwamba alikufa kwa ajili yako msalabani. And that God raised him from the dead. Na kwamba Mungu alimfufua kutoka kwa wafu and that he went on the cross for you na kwamba alienda pale msalabani kwa ajili yako you see it personally yani unaliona hilo wewe mtu mwenyewe binafsi and you feel it within your heart na unaihisi hicho kitu ndani ya moyo wako that Christ is my lord kwamba Kristo ndiye bwana wangu kids don't do that watoto wachanga huwa wafanyi hayo stop saying that you are baptizing kids acha kusema kuwa mnabatiza watoto that is is not baptism huo sio ubatizo that is not baptism huo sio ubatizo you need to believe unahitajika kuamini after you repent baada ya kutubu then believe ndipo unaamini then when, when you do that na ukifanya hivyo christ comes in you kristo anakuja ndani mwako and then he gives you the holy spirit ndipo anakupatia roho mtakatifu because the holy spirit is given to you when you become a born again person kwa sababu roho mtakatifu ana unapatiwa unapokuwa umeokoka ama umezaliwa mara ya pili once you receive christ you receive the holy spirit unapompokea kristo una, unapokea pia roho mtakatifu hallelujah hallelujah you don't wait until when you are going to be baptized into water then you get the holy spirit no hausubiri kwamba kwanza ukabatizwa kwanza kwenye maji ndipo utakuja kumpokea roho mtakatifu hapana the same day you believe and say jesus i receive you Siku hiyo hiyo utakayoamini na kusema Yesu Kristo anakupokea the holy spirit comes in you roho mtakatifu anakuja ndani mwako and then you can go for, for water baptism ndipo unaweza kaenda sasa kwa ajili ya ubatizo wa maji and that can make sense na hilo litaleta maana hallelujah somebody hallelujah mtu mmoja turn to your neighbor ask your neighbor where are you baptized Ebu mgeukea jirani yako muulize je ulibatizwa? I said touch your neighbor. Ebu mguse jirani huyo. You can even shake him, shake your neighbor. Mtikise, mtikise. Ask him where are you baptized? Muulize je ulibatizwa? Then ask him in which baptism did you receive? Muulize tena ulipokea ubatizo gani? Did you repent first? Muulize ulitubu kwanza? Did you believe in Christ? Je ulimwamini Kristo? Oh you just went because you want to enjoy waters Ama ulienda tu kwa sababu ulipen, ulitaka kufurahia maji I'm here to correct you Nipo hapa kukusahihisha We can even take you tomorrow in, 
to baptize you. Na tunaweza kesho asubuhi tukakwambia tukakubatize. Please make up your mind. Tafadhali fanya uamuzi. Christ is coming soon. Kristo anarudi hivi karibuni. You don't be in a church as a flower. Usiwemo kanisani kama uwa tu. Jesus loves you so much. Yesu anakupenda sana. How good it is. Jamani ni njema jinsi gani? How good it might be. Jamani ni itakuwa njema kiasi gani? When Jesus comes. Yesu atakapokuja. When the trumpet sound. Pale pala panda itakapolia. During the rapture day. Wakati wa unyakuo. All of us go to meet the master. Oh, wote tutakwenda kumpokea mwalimu. That's why that is all about this school. Yaani hivi ndivyo ina maana katika shule hii. We are awakening the church. Tunaliamsha kanisa. We are sent by the Holy Spirit. Tumetumwa na Roho Mtakatifu. May God richly bless you. Mungu akubariki kweli kweli. As you make up your mind. Ukiwa unafanya uamzi. Father God be thou glorified. Baba Mungu tunakuinua. We thank you for these revelations. Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya mafunuo haya. We don't want anybody to be to perish. Atuhitaji kila mmoja wetu apotee. You want all of us to be your children. Tunahitaji wote sisi tuwe watoto wako Father thank you for the word Baba asante kwa neno lako Bless us as we continue to meditate upon your word Tubariki wakati tunaendelea kutafakari katika neno lako In Jesus name we pray Katika jina la Yesu tunaomba Amen Amen God richly bless you Mungu awabariki kweli kweli Hallelujah Hallelujah Amen Amen